cataractcoach.com, prosthetic iris implantation, pearls for insertion of this helpful but tricky device. Our guest surgeon here is Dr. Val Apostolov from the Netherlands, and you can see the patients already had the cataract removed, there's a nice capsular rexus, and here comes the IOL. Patient has traumatic medriasis. Now, options for this are a few. Number one, you could do what we're doing here, which is a prosthetic iris device, which is going to go inside the capsular bag at the time of cataract surgery. You can also do some sort of suture closure if the iris tissue can sustain it and it won't cheese wire. You can also put in some of these uh, IOLs that have apertures in them. So some of these lenses have a prosthetic iris effect built in. So here you go. There's the device being placed into an IOL injection. You can see it's quite large. So some of it's helpful to roll these up. You got to keep in mind which side is up, which side is down, and get these into the injector and put them inside the eye. Now, the tough part here is that these devices are a lot bigger than you think. I mean, if your capsule X, let's say, is five millimeters, maybe five and a half millimeters, this thing's going to have a diameter that's like at least as much as the corneal diameter, let's say 11 or even 12 millimeters, so quite large. And because of that, it's a challenge to get it in the capsule bag. You can stain the capsule a little bit with tripan blue dye, and that can help visualize the capsule during the procedure. I like how Dr. Poslov has turned on just the red reflex light and to emphasize that red reflex. And now inserting this device, if you use tripan blue dye, you be careful, it may make the capsule a little less elastic. And you'll see in this case, you need a lot of kind of stretching in that capsule to get this thing to fit. So here is the device coming inside the eye. And you can also, if you'd like to, use a second hand or second instrument to help guide it into position. And also, you may want to have an extra pair of adhesives opposite the main incision. So here it comes, going inside the eye, and you can see just how big this device is. Now here's where if you fold it into quarters, you may have an easier time getting it in the caps or bag. And so now going in here, two instruments. I like the two-handed technique here. That's obviously going to be very useful. So... Trying to push this device into the capsule bag is not going to be simple. So you can get most of it in, it's just the very last part that becomes tough. And obviously this is meant to sit in the capsule bag. It's not meant to go um, into the, the sulcus. So capsule bag in these cases is probably, let's say 10 millimeters wide as it's stretched out by this device, maybe a little bit more. You can also trim these to size if you desire. That's really not required in most of these cases. And so here, placing it in the capture bag, and again, this is the tough part. So perhaps in a case like this, you don't need to have a five millimeter rexus because that optic is already held in place by this artificial iris. Maybe it would have been easier off having a six and a half or even larger millimeter capture rexus. A six and a half rexus would make life a lot easier. And again, you don't have to worry about it overlapping the optic because the rexus, even six and a half, would overlap this prosthetic iris. And in turn, that has about a four millimeter pupil, which would overlap the optic. And so you really have to take your time, get this thing in the capsule bag. And then once it is in the bag, you can, you can get it centered up and you'll have a pretty nice cosmetic result. Now, if you look at the thing here, it's not exactly a perfect match, but really at conversation distance, it's really quite acceptable. And this looks great. So if you don't have this dev device available, which may be hard to get in the USA, you can also, again, we can do a purse string type of suturing. So you can you use a purse string to suture around the iris pupil margin and then create a pupil. And again, your goal is probably a three and a half to four millimeter pupil. You can also do what we've shown here in the past, which is that four throw pupiloplasty. You can just do a few bites of that, and that can help give you a pretty reasonable pupil. Won't be perfectly round, but it'll be pretty good. And again, reasonable for conversation distance. In a patient with a dark iris, there's a brown iris, it's a lot more forgiving. Patients with a blue or very light colored iris, again, it's a little bit tougher. And so here's this big device in the capsule bag. Just be careful in doing all this manipulation because this capsule bag obviously is required to hold this, this lens um, iris implant in place. So you can see here, don't think you have that sub-incisional or inferior part of your screen completely in the capsule bag. And here's why I say staining with tripan blue dye can help because the tripan will help stain that capsule so your visualization will be a little bit easier 
But again, the downside is if you have the tripod, pad, it could also make the capsule a little less elastic. But see, quite a struggle here. It's not as easy as you think to get this device in there. So I think our take home lesson is uh, get a nice big juicy caps for X's. I've not yet implanted one of these. If I do in the future, I will be sure to make a six and a half millimeter Rexus just to facilitate things and make life a lot easier. But finally, once you get it inside, look at that, it centers up quite nicely and this patient has a pretty nice result. And again, take your time here, make sure it really is complete in the capsule bag. Again, hard to see the Rexus edge here, but I think it's looking pretty good at this point. Just this one last area to get in the bag and once that happens, whoo, home free. These patients can also have other comorbidities such as glaucoma, and now you've got a beautiful result. So thanks for sending the video in, always fun to watch.